Greetings, my fellow dreamers, and a very warm welcome to you all. So today, I have another brand that I haven't featured on the channel yet, and it's Aroma from the 90s. Oh, you mean that aroma coming from your armpits? No, not aroma. Just Roma. Cheeky little git. I've been working hard in the sun fixing stuff, so a little aromatic perspiration is expected. Anyway, this particular piece is supposedly a 44 joule automatic dive watch with the inner rotating bezel and is a bit of an icon due to its really cool amphibious name. The Stingray. What do you mean that's not the sound of a stingray? The history of Roma can be traced back to 1888, founded in Switzerland by Fritz Meyer, who concentrated mainly on producing cylinder escapements. Meyer later partnered with Johann Studeli, which gave birth to Meyer and Studeli, aka MST, as in the movement manufacturer. Delicious crocodile. Ooh. Meyer and Studeli officially became known as the Roma Watch Company only in the 1950s. Roma is still producing watches to this day. <laughs> so for a dive watch we don't have any gaskets or anything so far i haven't seen any the only ones i can see are on the crowns so let's remove them so let's have a look at this inner diver's bezel rather than having it on the outside they put it on the inside which is q so there's probably a little gear on the end of this stem rotates it the dial and the hands all seem to be from the first edition from the 60s and then on the later edition they added this contrasting inner chapter ring with the bright red numbers it also had sort of striking yellow hand so this one i don't know whether somebody's upgraded this chapter ring or whether it was an in-between model it is the stingray s so that's quite interesting. There's all the teeth on it. You can also see a couple of clips holding it in. There's one there as well. So I'll just remove those. So again, I chose this piece because I haven't done a Roma and also I haven't done one of these dive watches with the inner rotating bezels and how it works i always like showing you guys new stuff how cool is that sweet so considering this is a dive watch that dives up to 200 meters built in the 60s without any gaskets the only thing that's stopping all that water gushing in is this bit of plastic and a little o-ring in the crown that's a feat in itself but we'll test it later on to see how waterproof it is i might leave all this i don't think it's radium it's more tritium so i might leave it all alone on the markers because it seems quite stable and people love these tropical sort of volume but you can see on the hands some of it's come off so i might just redo the hands so 
It's a shame the dial's got a few scratches on it. Let's remove the dial first before we get any more marks on it. I have been doing a lot of gardening, so excuse the disgusting hands. And one on the other side. I've been growing sweet corn. <laughs> I don't even like sweet corn. And I've been trying to grow some bonsai. In my head, this is what it was supposed to look like. But in actual reality, this is what it looked like. <laughs> I'm also working on an Amiga Jedi. So if you want to see that one, hit that subscribe button and let's get it to 300,000. Oh yeah, as you can see on the dial, it does say Roto 44 date. And guess what? This is a 44 joule movement. What? Let's see if we can find those 44 joules, eh? Because that's madness. 44 joules. So currently, amplitude is quite low. Slight beat error and the rate is plus 46. So we'll see what happens to all that after a service. Just going to remove this rotor. It's a nice little contrast, the copper and the rhodium. This is a really cool little movement, MST471. Next we'll just remove the balance. Little washer, our wheel, cannon pinion. Now the next thing, which is a bit unorthodox, is I want to remove this date disc. I don't want this touching the bottom of the movement holder and damaging it. We have three little screws and I told them not to worry. We have a little spring on the underside of the date cover. So let's just remove any loose bits and then we can go back onto the other side. So we have a little jumper here. Now whenever you see a screw like this with the multiple slits, be very suspicious that it might be a reverse threaded screw. Instead of going anti-clockwise, we are gonna go clockwise it should tighten it right but no and there's another little spring here which I'll remove so now everything else is secure I'll go back on the other side and leave the keyless as it is for now look at that beautiful click with the spring wrapped around its neck. So you can see here, it says three quarter 10. Let's let the power down. Just remove this automatic works here. Oh no, battery, don't die. Please. So that's also part of the automatic works. So you got four jewels there, which is a total of six so far. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And the click screw is also acting as a screw for the bridge. And that is a different screw to the other two. 
a very impressive looking click. Got another little spring there. Yeah, I'm going to take that off so I can oil it up. So, see all these needs to be oiled. We can probably just slide this mainspring out. Another spring, yoke, So I've been looking for the jewels and I don't even come close to 44. I've got 26. I think this is the 28 jewel version and somebody's just changed the rotor and possibly the dial or they've just put in a 28 jewel movement. Somewhere along the line it's been bastardized. Anyway, let's count the jewels, the two removable jewels. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have another two here. Train bridge, we have another four. On the balance, we have the roller jewel. And again, similar to this one, including the two removable jewels. Two more on the pallet fork. And one on the pallet fork cock, just there. And then we have four little bridge for the automatic works. There are three versions of this movement, a 28 joule, a 44 joule and a 17 joule version. So as you can see this crown for the inner bezel, usually there is a screw here on some models which you can use to remove this whole crown and gear. But on this one, I think it's friction fitted on and I don't want to faff around with it because it's a part that I won't be able to source if it gets damaged. But I can do the case back without removing that and the case as you can see is completely free of any obstructions so I can finish that off on the lapping machine as it has some really cool angles there. One here and one at the bottom. That will be relatively easy to do. Some of the markings you can see have started to fade maybe on a previous polish. So I'll have to be very careful with that. This section, that section, that step. There's a lot of text on this step here, so I'll be very careful. 
this is a flat bit try and avoid touching this I'm gonna apply a little bit of this mask on the logo this is from Horatech I think I use a lot of Horatech products but to be honest this isn't very good you guys have probably seen a, a purple one I have to try and get some of that for the next one just protecting this stingray and I'll once I've done the rest of the case back I'll take a more delicate approach with this with the logo for now I just want to cover it up and give it some protection so it doesn't accidentally get caught so I'll just start off with the plexi and we'll use our soft mop So most of the smaller ones are done and we've just got a couple of big ones here. Very gently as we don't want to burn the plastic with too much heat and the friction. I'm doing it in circular motions just to keep it all even and not have any flat spots. Even though some of the areas like this don't need any material removing, it's best to do all of it so we get to the level of that scratch so we have an even surface all the way around. So we just keep going in circular motion. Nearly there. Just those couple of big ones there. Another one there. Charge it up a little bit more. So, as you can see, we managed to get rid of those deep ones. You can see just there where it was. So I think just a little bit more, that should give us a nice clean plexi. Still see under certain light lighting conditions. See, you can still see them here. I can't feel them, but I can still see them. So, let's try a little bit more. Yeah, I think we'll call it a day there. You can see with the case, we have these angles here and i haven't been able to find any original catalog photographs but it would make sense to have this bit mirrored and the top and bottom brushed which would give it that contrast so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to mirror this little angle here and brush the top and the side and then i'm going to go down further Might be a bit too high. I think we've got it on the right angle now. can do that side as well which is flat I'm 
gonna speed it up a bit now that we've got the correct line and come back here maybe needs to go down a bit there you go it's coming up nicely and then once I've removed all that I'll move on to a more coarser grit just to give you that final brush look I've been using the stitch mop to get the marks off the curved bit just need a little bit more so instead of mounting it on the lapping machine tool bobino because of this crown I mounted it onto my lathe so I can get it so I'll remove all the big scratches using the stick and then I'll finish up with the mop See the difference already? So we've got a long way to go, but mm -hmm. we'll get there. You ready? Yeah. Ooh. Coming along, huh? Here's what we got so far. This thing looks quite good with this oily mirrored finish. I don't know whether to leave it like this or give it a brushed look. But I ended up brushing it anyway. As you can see on the back, it's getting quite faded in some areas as it's been polished several times before. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And I don't want to polish this textured inside, but the stingray itself has got all its detailing still on it. You can see the surface has got a slight polish on it, the letters as well. So what I want to do now with this textured part here, I'm just going to give it a clean with a toothbrush so I can get into all those little crevices uh, and the rest hopefully will come out in the ultrasonic. So as you guys can see this is the original plexi, special plexiglass with the Roma logo inside a little 
Pac-Man. Un, deux, treize, quatre. Oh, OK. So, since it's a dive watch, we can use some rubber. So, this one is 20 mil. That's a 26. <laughs> That's a 24. So, our case lug width is 18. So, when you have a case like this, with a lug with a big overhang and you put a strap on it so this strap is 18 mil and the lug width is 18 mil you can see it looks a bit weird so instead i prefer to have one with a little notch so the actual width doesn't look too skinny so this notch here is 20 mil so i'll have to cut it down a little bit or i can do it with a 24 which looks a bit better. So when it's tucked in, it will look a bit better. It would look nice with this because I'm not a great fan of these, but I don't have any of these other than 26. And I think 26 is a bit too much. So 18 is the right size, but it looks weird. 20 is okay, but I think I'll go with the, is that 20, 24 or 22? Okay, so that's a 24 and the overhang is 26. I'm going to cut up the 24 and see how that looks. And to do that, we have a little tool like this. So you can see I've marked it out. Just see if it fits. Then I'll tidy it up. Nah, that looks trash. I've just found this one, which is a used one from another watch. So I'll have a go at cutting out a little notch on that one. Let's go, let's go, let's make a video. Now, because of its weird and wonderful automatic contraption, this mainspring actually goes in like a Japanese movement where it's anti-clockwise in the barrel so we make sure that it's clockwise in the tool and then anti-clockwise in the barrel it's clockwise in the tool Now it's anti-clockwise in the barrel. There's an ice cream van. Can you go and get me ice cream? It's not on in the world. 
go and chase it down. Who? Yeah, she. Is there another one? Now as you can see there's a little jewel here on the intermediate bridge which I won't be able to oil later on so put a little bit of oil on it now. So we've got that intermediate wheel and pinion in. And now we can get the bridge in. Smooth, just like a silk. We're oiling. So we'll just assemble this bridge first for the barrel and we have this little washer here for the driving wheel, for the ratchet wheel. Put a little bit of juice on there. And this is the driving wheel for the ratchet wheel and I'll put a little bit of lubrication on there. And that is the core. So that's the three quarter screw, which you unscrew, then you just slide it across, which releases the automatic mechanism. And then that would enable you to use the click to let the power down. That went in by accident. Now we need to get that setting lever screw in before we put the bridge in. This click is so beautiful. Just try and get it behind the spring, just there. So now we can assemble some of this automatic works, and this is a reduction gear and pinion. We have another intermediate reduction gear. I think this intermediate reduction gear could do with a bit of something. And then we have the two coupling clutches. 
one here. Another coupling clutch there. And now we can put the bridge on. Just make sure everything's free. So this is where some of the extra jewels would have been on the 44 joule version where this rotor bearing instead of the steel ball bearings it would have had some rubies in there that would have given us the few extra jewels and we'll continue to make sure that everything still moves boom 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 testing so now I've just flipped it over to the other side and i'll do a bit of oiling i've also just got stung by a bee right on my forehead with the bloody nesting in my roof and i was trying to relocate them they weren't too happy with that when you get stung by a bee because you thought you were a g just use some blue grease and you'll find some peace. Come on, Eileen. Got stung by a bee. Just get that setting lever in. Don't need to tighten it fully. Let's get some D5 or HP1300 on the sliding pinion, some on the post. Hello, May. Look at the lump on my forehead. Can you see? No. Oh, a bee? Yeah. Crazy bees, huh? Oh, boy, now you're going to get a gold plate button. Yeah, you have to get. I think a million subscribers. So what's after 900,000 subscribers? 999 then a million. We have to tell all our subscribers to pull their finger out. <laughs> anyway, what can I help you with? I just want you to chill out. But you could do one of your Picassos. You know someone that has no body and no nose? No. No body, nose. That's than yours. I think you should get your coat, mate. So you guys are making some brownies and stuff. We did. Are they ready? Yeah, we can make these little things. You already ate them. Not all of them. You didn't save me one. You did save me some more. Oh, that was just four. Oh, no, no. Bruh, you're one noisy little so and so, you know. This is the spring for the unlocking yoke. So this is the date indicator driving wheel. And I think I'll just put a little bit of lubrication just inside there. As you can see, it is a moving part. So it's not going to harm to just put a little bit. So this is the unlocking yoke for the date indicator a weird little fella and we have this little ring here which I didn't even know was there on the post for the date indicator wheel driving wheel Then we can slide in the wheel in between that 
unlocking yoke like so and that's the cover with the spring for the jumper sitting underneath like so while we're here might as well put on the cannon pinion and the jumper Give everything a little clean. And we're just going to push that spring behind the jumper, like so. Now I can screw it down on here and there. And if we stick the hour wheel on, we should be able to test that state system. Should turn over to two. There you go. Let's try it again. Should go to three. So that works fine. And now we'll get the pallet fork in. Just give it a few winds and see if this little pallet fork flicks over. I've got the rotor on and I think in terms of amplitude that's probably around the figure that this movement gives. I'll tweak it a little bit to get that better. There's a regulator here so I've been fiddling around with that and there's also a screw here for fine adjustments and we've got it down to zero beat error plus one second a day and the amplitude seems pretty low but i think that's the range for this particular movement based on my research i was going to zero seconds a day so that's pretty decent i think we'll leave it at that so as you saw the hands did glow slightly green but the aging has caused it to go slightly orange so instead of using this orange loom which actually glows orange i'm going to use a green one and add a little bit of tint to it and see how that looks so i'm just going to give the hands a little wash then i'm going to put it in the ultrasonic in this jar and then i can capture all of it in this jar and then get rid of it safely so let's see which one glows the best I don't know.
Now I'm going to add a little bit of tint. So what do you guys reckon? I think that's close enough. That's the rubber strap. Nah. So that looks a bit better. Although it is a dive watch, I don't think anybody's going to be using it for diving. So I think I'll cut up one of the 20 mils. Here goes nothing. Bada boom. Looks much better. Let's just film something random. Okay, let's see if it's a waterproof. Mission aboard, mission aboard. Fatto a mano. That means fat man. So surprisingly, the leak was only on that bezel crown and not through the case back or the glass. So I have full confidence that this stingray would be able to swim once that crown is remedied. So there you have it, folks. A bit of a Frankenstein this, put together by some mad scientist somewhere along the line. A 28 joule flounder dressed as a 44 joule stingray. But it's still a nice little piece with bags of charm that's had a very interesting journey. I hope you've enjoyed this one and found it useful. If you would like to see more content like this, then please consider subscribing. Thank you all for chilling out with me today. And thanks to all of you who were constantly checking to see if I was okay during my summer sabbatical. So until next time, look after yourselves and look after each other. Peace, love and blessings to you all. And if the Almighty wills, 
I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra!